it's been one year. <laughs> this week is the anniversary for when I kicked off releasing weekly videos on my channel. I wanted to take a look back at where things have gone, where they're going, as well as to talk about some of the amazing people I've been able to meet and opportunities the channel has opened up to me. And with YouTube being so jam-packed with creators, I know some of you want to start your own channel too. And maybe wondering if it's too late to create a YouTube channel in 2019. And make sure to stay through to the end if you'd like to see some outtakes. Oh, the outtakes. <laughs> So when I posted my first video July 4th week of 2018, I had no idea what I wanted to do with the channel yet and just wanted to put something out there to see if anybody would even watch it. Even though I had some serious doubts, I figured what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> I talked about the Luna Display, which was a Kickstarter project that I had backed that allowed you to use an iPad as a second screen for your computer. I'm a UI designer and an artist and use programs like Photoshop every day with Wacom tablets. An iPad and an Apple Pencil attached to a Mac? Sign me up. Even though it was just a simple and <laughs> horribly made unboxing video, it got a bunch of people that watched it, commented, and asked questions. My second video, which was my review of the Sonos One smart speaker, got even more views, which is when I knew I might be onto something. And from that point on, it's been an experiment every week to see what content works and what doesn't, and to zero in on the ultimate direction of the channel. YouTube has more than 500 hours of new content uploaded every minute. Just let that sink in. 500 hours of things that you could watch uploaded every minute. That's 720,000 hours every day. I know some people don't like it when I say this, like my wife, but that's just bananas. There are a lot of people out there that would love to start publishing videos, but talk themselves out of it because of the numbers like those. In 2019, it may feel like it's too late to start a channel and get attention and views on the content that you produce. And don't get me wrong, it is difficult to get attention on the videos that you produce, but every video I put out, it's like a roll of the dice. There are videos that I thought a lot of people would be interested in watching and nobody does. Others that I thought would be mildly interesting to a niche audience turned out to be some of my biggest performing videos of all time. A good example of that for me is my video on my solar panels I had installed in my house. I thought, there would be a small number of people that might find it somewhat interesting to see some details on the process, the technology, and someone else's experience getting them installed. Turns out, it wasn't a small number. That video I published in February is nearing 450,000 views and almost 3 million minutes watched. <laughs> Another is my video on the Tesla and Maxwell Technologies deal that I published in June. I originally wasn't planning on doing a deep dive on that topic because several other channels like Sean Mitchell's Everything's EVs and Galileo Russell at Hyperchange, they had already created some great content on that exact subject. I didn't want to make a video if it wouldn't add something to the conversation, but I had several subscribers asking for my take on it, and then some new information started coming out to help paint a fuller picture. So I ultimately decided to jump in and publish my take on it. I had no idea my video would strike such a chord. Even though I was late to the party, <laughs> again, I'm still figuring this out. And please don't take this as me bragging. It's far from it. I'm my own worst critic and have a lot to learn on producing YouTube videos. But the point I'm raising is that it's never too late and you can't predict what's gonna happen. If you have an idea and you're not seeing it talked about or if you have an angle or take that adds to the conversation, something that's unique to you and your perspective and your communication style, then it's never too late to share that idea and put something out there. YouTube is super crowded, but you can absolutely still publish a video and get people to tune in and watch. There are over 1 billion, with a B, people that watch YouTube. You can find an audience. It doesn't matter if you publish one video or 1,000. One of the things that really surprised me with my YouTube channel is the opportunities it's opened up for me that I never thought I'd get. Like an invitation to a Tesla reveal event or to a SpaceX rocket launch. I never thought I'd be able to reach out to a company for details on a product and service and actually get a response. I never thought I'd be able to meet other YouTubers I respect and admire and actually have some of them know who I was before I even say a word. That one still freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> But between the Model Y and SpaceX launch events, I met so many great people from the Tesla community, like Ben Sullins from Teslanomics, 
Brian from I1 Tesla, Matt Pressman from EV Annex, Steve Sassman from Tesla Renter, and Joe Scott from Answers with Joe. And that's just a few of them. There are so many amazing people in the Tesla and YouTube communities, it's been amazing to connect with even just a few of them. And to be extremely fair, I could have connected with more of those people at those events, but my shyness and not wanting to uh, bother some of them held me back. <laughs> but that's not counting some of the coolest people I've been able to connect with, which is the people that have reached out to me through the comments, Twitter, Instagram, and email. It's been incredible to hear from all of you, to hear your ideas for videos, thoughts when you agree or even disagree with me on my take of things, and just general thoughts and feedback. I've really enjoyed talking about things like the Jan Brady of Tesla Model 3 cars, which is the all-wheel drive Model 3, by the way. There's one person in particular out there that I know will get that reference. <laughs> that one's for you, Adam. Or being able to hear some amazing music and talking audio with some incredibly talented musicians. So has the roller coaster ride of being a YouTuber been all sunshine and rainbows? Not so much. <laughs> the way I write and produce my videos is a lot of work, so it's really been a labor of love. And what YouTube giveth, YouTube can taketh away. I've seen my view and subscriber numbers go through crazy growth, as well as times that it looks like YouTube has just turned off all recommendations to every one of my videos all at once. If you're thinking of starting publishing videos on YouTube, one of my big recommendations would be to not live and breathe the YouTube analytics too much. If you lose yourself in the numbers, which I have a tendency to do, you're only going to give yourself a coronary when the numbers inevitably stagnate and plummet at seemingly random times. What about the money? And am I living that YouTube lifestyle? If you're getting into YouTube to get rich, think again. You're not gonna make a lot of money off of YouTube at least anytime soon, and not anything you can count on consistently. I get a nice little check from YouTube ads every month, but there's no way I could live off of that money. Not even close. The amount varies wildly month to month, but between ads, Patreon, and affiliate programs, the channel's earning enough right now to help pay for the costs of running the channel, but not including the time and effort that I'm putting into it. And that's fine. As much as I'd love for this to be my main thing, I'm a freelance UI designer by day and earning my living that way. But that leads me to being an influencer. The larger the channel gets, the more views the channel gets. The more views the channel gets, the more chances there are to earn money through things like sponsorships or to make money from being an influencer. I hate that word, by the way. It's like a four letter word to me. The last thing I wanna be considered is an influencer. I'm a creator. I wanna provide interesting content. I wanna provide a viewpoint that you may not have considered or heard before. And if I'm reviewing a product, I wanna provide information that can help you make your own decision. Informing and educating might have an influence on someone, but that's just a byproduct. Am I in denial on that? You can tell me. <laughs> so one year in, nearly 50,000 subscribers, which is crazy. I never thought I'd have nearly 50,000 subscribers in a year. I still have a hard time grasping that number. As an artist, I'm my own worst critic. Always have been, always will be. I don't take compliments well, and I'm usually waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's kind of funny considering how optimistic a person I am when it comes to things like technology, renewable energy, battery storage, Tesla, smart homes, you name it. But when it comes to me personally and things that I create, I'm extremely harsh on myself and always have that little voice in the back of my head seeding doubt. I suffer from a massive case of imposter syndrome. Always have and always will. And if you're like me and you have that, have that little voice that's chirping away doubts in your ear and it's been keeping you from jumping into something like YouTube, put a muzzle on that little voice and just jump in. I muzzled mine, and the worst that happened was I found myself with 50,000 subscribers, some of which I've become friends with, and opportunities that have opened up a chapter in my life that I never expected. This has been one heck of a roller coaster ride for me, and I can't wait to see where the next year takes this experiment. I have so much planned for the next year, and more deep dives into Tesla and other technology, as well as product reviews and how-tos for apps and smart home tech. Thank you so much to all of you. None of this, and I mean none of it, would be possible without all of you that have watched, subscribed, commented, and been part of this journey with me. Cheers to one year.
Now, if you've made it this far into the video, you know what I'm gonna say to close this out. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And enjoy these outtakes. There are 1.3 billion, with a B, people that watch YouTube. Oh my God. Whether it's Smart Things, Home Assistant, or Hubitat, the same basic functionality is there for across all these systems. Blah, 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 blah. For my research, there are a couple of common battery systems you're looking at when it comes to home use. Lead acid, lead acid. God, she wants to kill him. In fact, it's somewhat standard practice for all of these services. I'm not sure. That's not good. The mailman killed my mother. I must avenge her death. Consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to get alerts when I post new videos. And as always, thanks you so much. Oh my God, what is wrong with me? <laughs> I've said this like 50 times. In the UK, there's the, oh man, I gotta look that up. <laughs> I gotta look that up. Holy crap. how do you pronounce that? Holy shit. The mailman. He's the worst. Bringing things to our house. Bringing her toys and treats. What a jerk. Let's try this again. <laughs> I love my dog. I still want to strangle her right now.